Just about anybody you speak with would like to have financial freedom. Who wouldn't? We all desire it. In this video, I wanted to talk about how anybody can achieve financial freedom. If you really apply yourself, you honestly look at a good plan, you have discipline, and you set on a course to be a saver and an investor. Over the last few months, I've been asked to record some videos to help people really get their investing process and plan in order. And I wanted to do so by starting with a good high level video on why one would want to invest. And the answer is to have financial freedom, financial freedom to buy the house you want to buy and live where you want to live, to have the experiences in life that you want to have vacation around the world. It's to take care of the people that are, mean something to you, whether it be children, yourself, a spouse, a parent. If you have financial freedom, you can do all those things. And what could be more important than those relationships? So in this video, I wanted to set the agenda of future videos that are going to come, future videos that help an investor that's getting started, or maybe an investor wants to brush up their investing game, taking a look at some of the fundamentals of investing and being able to really do the best they can with the savings they have, with the net worth that they build. The sooner you start, the sooner you will get there. A lot of people postpone planning out how to get to financial freedom for a lot of reasons. First, investing can be really intimidating. Investing long-term, it just seems like, man, it's going to take a long time to get there. And that may be true. But the sooner you start, the sooner you get there. The sooner you start, the sooner you build up some wealth. The sooner you start making bigger investments. So really just getting started, I would really encourage you to be eager to get that going. Start saving. A principle that I was told at a young age was to always save 10% of my income and when possible, save more. I was told that if I did that, I'd always have more money than I needed. And that was true. I heard that more than 30 years ago. And that's absolutely been true. So get started. Get started by saving. Do auto deductions. Just have your employer put money into your 401k. If your employer doesn't have a 401k or a retirement savings account, Work with your brokerage, have them deduct from your bank account, an amount you can afford. If you can't afford 10%, totally understand. Just make it so that you're putting in something every month, every month. And that way you just continue to grow what you've saved. Now that you've started to save up some capital, what do you do next? I would encourage you to really form a plan. And this is a plan that isn't going to be static. It's not going to be a, Hey, I'm going to plan this out and execute it over the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I don't, think that would ever work. But really, it would be a plan of just really visualizing what you want to accomplish. Is it, hey, I want to retire early. I'm 45 and I'd like to retire early. That's a great, great goal. Maybe it'll take five, 10 years, but really assess where you're at and form a plan to get there. Maybe you're 25 and you're like, hey, I want to buy a house. I want to buy a house in a particular area. That's great. You want to start your first home or you want to buy your first home. That's awesome. So goals like that, I think are, are really meaningful and serve to really motivate and really keep a person on the path of continuing to save, on the path of saving in the right ways. Having hard-earned money saved up, it's really meaningful and you really protect it. Speaking from experience, it was really important for me to know that hey, that money is in a safe place and that money is going to continue to grow. Now, the first investment that I would encourage you to make is in yourself. And that investment should be a lifelong uh, discipline. That's of learning. Learn to invest. And once you've learned to invest, learn to be a better investor. And if you made lots of money in one year, learn to make more money. And if you made a million dollars overall, learn how to make $2 million. And once you get to 2 million, learn to make $4 million. Learning. Learning is an investment in you. And with YouTube and access to information through the internet, we are in the golden age of investing. There's no limitation to what you can learn online how much information you can get. You can learn from professors in colleges that are teaching finance, how to value companies. You can learn from my channel. You can learn from other channels too. So learning, learning is the most important investment that you can make in your overall plan to get to financial freedom. If you learn to be a great investor, financial freedom will be very accessible. You're going to empower yourself to grow your wealth in many different ways, to diversify the way that you make money, and overall, it's just really gratifying to become a better investor. Everything I've talked about to this point has not involved buying one share of stock or one bond. 
And really because you can't do that until you have capital. So everything that I just shared prior to this is about accumulating that capital through working, through hustling on side jobs. Maybe you're fortunate and you got some type of inheritance or a gift from a family member. Whatever the case may be, once you have some capital, you feel like you want to begin to invest. I would encourage you, having invested a lot of time learning, is really start slow. Don't bet big on long shots. Start slow and really get your feet on the ground, maybe with some ETFs. Never invest in something you do not understand. It is very important. If you do not understand an investment, whether it succeeds or it fails, you've learned nothing. You didn't understand it. But if you understand an investment and it works, you may have touched on something or an area where you can make more money and you learned how to make more money from a particular industry of stocks or a particular type of bond or a particular CD account. And that is where you just continue to get better. So start slow. You don't have to hit a home run on your first at bat. If you are putting a lot of time into learning, you can learn through other people's experiences. A lot of people on YouTube will share their experiences. They invest in stocks and bonds. So you can do a lot of learning and somewhat have a area of knowledge and experience through others. Once you've invested in some stocks, bonds, it's really important to understand that your emotional state is just as important as your mental state. Stock market will go up and down. And when the stock market has crashes, it will seem that the crashes will last forever. Crashes will have the, the news outlets just repeating negative story after negative story. It will seem that certain stocks are going to go down to zero, that the companies are going to go bankrupt. That's all real. If we look at the last three crashes that I'll cite, starting with COVID, it just happened four years ago. It was a tremendous crash. What I would leave you with is just about every stock that went down 30, 40% got right back up and actually exceeded the current price level within a year. People who got scared and ran out of the market, they lost big. People who had the emotional strength to just know that that was a temporary crash did fine. They actually did better because people put more capital in the market and they did really well during that crash. Looking at the crash before, the subprime mortgage meltdown that happened in 2008, 2009, that was a tremendous crash and it took a lot of investors capital and depreciated it. But again, over a number of years, those stocks all rebounded. It became a great buying opportunity for investors to come in and put in capital. I personally made a lot of money during that era of investing, but it takes almost a tough minded contrarian view when the stock market's selling off and putting money back into the market when everybody else is afraid. So understand that emotionally, you just have to understand that if you look at a long-term stock chart of the S&P, it continues to go up and to the right, long-term. Look at the last 100 years. Look at the last 50 years. It goes up and to the right, but it's not a perfect straight line. It has certain years where the stock market really crashes. And I think being emotionally ready, being intellectual uh, ability to understand what's going on, it's really important. It's really important to practice it so that an investor doesn't abandon a stock or a, a group of stocks when things are really fearful because you may be doing exactly the wrong thing. You may be uh, facing a great opportunity to buy more at a time when stocks are really discounted. So I would leave you with that comment and recommendation, which is begin to get emotionally tough. And I'm not the only one that said this. I think Warren Buffett said it, that until you're emotionally ready, you should not invest in stocks. So I think that's an important topic to cover. So once you've got a solid plan, you have the discipline to save up your money and you are accumulating your capital, your wealth. Now you're ready to actively invest. Determine what areas you have an advantage in. It may be jobs you've had in particular industries. It may be family members that work in particular industries. It may be industries that you grew up around. You know, that's a great place to get started and that's a great place to invest because if you have an information advantage and you understand an industry, that's an advantage. And again, I do not invest in something I do not understand. I have to understand it. I don't have to be an expert in an industry, but I need to understand 
how the industry functions, how they make money, how much cash flow a business makes, all those things, I have to understand them. So start in areas that you already have a knowledge advantage. So on this video, I wanted to set the table and the theme for videos that are gonna come. I'm gonna create videos on how to, how to evaluate a company, look at their financials, understand financial statements from the income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of cash flows, how to review the company's investor website, how to listen to the earnings calls, how to really be informed on a company and how I make decisions around a company and buying into that company. Do I believe in them? Do I look at their management? How do I grade their management? All those things are qualitative skills that I've established over years. Well, I'd like to go through that to help you grow those qualitative skills. Now, the finance and the mathematics, it just it does take some mathematics to value a company, but I'll go through and teach how to value a company based on free cash flows, earnings per share, earnings, and how finance professionals are valuing those companies. Those are really important to learn. As you look at the most valuable companies on the stock market, whether it be Microsoft, which is the most valuable right now, over $3 trillion of market cap, when you understand their financials, you understand why they're valued that high. And you see how investors are valuing Microsoft based on their discounted cash flows and the projection of their earnings per share going forward. Understanding that will empower you. It'll make you a better investor. It'll help you understand why Microsoft is that valuable. So you could then go on and find other companies that are gonna grow like Microsoft has grown over their history. So the course to financial freedom, again, it's not a giant secret how to get there. You save up, you invest right, and you get there. It's no secret how to invest in companies. It's no secret how to learn to invest. All those things are available on YouTube. So I hope that my videos just help investors, whether they're new investors, veteran investors, just think about investing a little closer and become just a better investor overall. We're all trying to establish financial freedom because financial freedom really does create a lot of great things for one's life, whether it be vacations in Europe, or it be sending a child to a university where that person gets a great education and gets going on a great life, professional life. All those things are super meaningful. Living in a house where one wants to live and really living a lifestyle that somebody is happy with. That's all financial freedom and it's all accessible. It takes a really good plan, discipline, honesty, and a willingness to learn. I hope you enjoy the videos that I create and I hope you give me feedback on this video in all the videos that I create so I can create better content that'll be more helpful to more investors. Thank you for watching.